Democrat, Republican? Republican. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, then you're probably not going to disagree. I do disagree. I think it's really detrimental to a country where you block freedom of the press from disagreeing with the president. It's better to have these disagreeing publications so that we hear this other side. I completely agree with everything you've just said. I, that's why I think calling them fake news is a bad thing. But they are fake news. Okay, time for the latest installment of Change My Mind, where we rationalize our positions on controversial issues. For this episode, I set up shop outside CNN headquarters in Washington, D.C. to discuss why I believe that CNN is fake news. Funnily enough, we actually ended up having more conservatives sit down than liberals who tried to argue the other side. I mean, I kind of agree with the fact that CNN's kind of fake news. Okay, hold on a second. Do you really disagree, or where do you I actually up? do disagree. I'm, okay. I'm conservative, and I have watched your show for a long time, but uh, I think that a lot of We've had these... nothing but conservatives today. You disagree? Uh, not really, but I would like to talk, perhaps. Well, which kind of surprised me. Maybe not too many people actually disagree with the premise. So what do you think? Is CNN a legitimate, unbiased network of journalism? Or is it merely fake news masquerading as such? Comment below, let me know. But first up, meet Christine. No pressure. Just... Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Steven. Hi, I'm Christine. Christine. Nice, nice to meet you, Christine. Here. So you work next to see it. You work next to see it. I do. I work in this building. Uh, you work at the uh, Department of Education? Um, well, I, I work for a private corporation that's working for the Department of Education. Okay. All right. You don't have to tell me. I don't mean to pry or anything. Okay. Yes. But uh, you said you kind of liked CNN. So yeah, today's uh, topic is, uh, listen, I think CNN is fake news, not real, not a legitimate news outlet. Um, I know a lot, of his, a lot of people disagree with me. I'm not convinced, but you're more than welcome to change my mind or we can just talk about it in this case because it sounded like you weren't sure. Well, I think that every news network, whether it be CNN or Fox News, has it, their own biases. Sure. Um, I think that... I think what you're referring to is the events that happened yesterday. Um, well, what do you mean? No, I'm not referring to any just specific events from yesterday, but what are you referring to? Um, well, I thought you were insinuating um, about the, the shootings that happened yesterday and how, you know, the news media may be biased regarding um, their coverage. Well, they definitely are, but no, that's not what I'm talking about. Well, I think overall, every news media outlet has their own biases. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think that's the freedom of speech, and I think that's protected. And, I agree. Um, you know, CNN might say things that people disagree with and that might cause some uproars, and Fox News does as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that applies to every news network. Um, but. But yeah. I would say the primary difference between you know Fox News and MSNBC, uh, and Fox News, to be fair to them, they do have a news division, but people like Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, our opinion, as well as Rachel Maddow, Chris Hayes, uh, or sorry, Chris Matthews, you know where they line up, right? They're being forthcoming about the fact that they're op-edsmen. The CNN presents itself as actual news, and that's my issue. I think you're right, they do have a bias. I think we both agree, but they claim that they don't. They claim it straight down the middle news. My issue is the dishonesty, is the misleading the American public as though this is unbiased news. Especially when CNN has been caught fabricating so many stories out of thin air that people, unfortunately, many of many people still believe them. Oh, what do you mean by fabricate it? Can you provide a perspective? Yeah, I mean, make them up. Like most of the Russia stories, right? Like, uh, for example, I mean, the Donald Trump peeing on prostitutes, made up. The idea that Donald Trump got information from WikiLeaks beforehand. I don't know if you still believe that. Made up. They had to retract it. The idea that Donald Trump knew about the Trump Tower meetings beforehand. Uh, they said it was an they said it in an anonymous source and then said Lonnie Davis uh, declined to comment. The source was Lonnie Davis. Uh, the idea that uh, Don well they called Donald Trump a liar when he said James Comey told him he wasn't under investigation. Turns out James Comey said that three times. Um, they were the ones who pushed the Fusion GPS, the Steele dossier. You know, the whole Russia collusion is pushed by the Steele dossier that was paid for by the DNC and by Hillary Clinton, who did work with the Russians to try and do oppo research. So time after time after time, and of course now it, it's been proven that he didn't collude with the Russians, um, but you have 48% of Americans who do, and an even greater percentage of Americans who believe a lot of these verifiably false stories that came exclusively from CNN. That's my issue. I don't have an issue with someone going up there saying, hey, I have an opinion, I don't like the president. I have an issue with people claiming that they're journalists, but lying to mislead the American public. Well, I think when those reports happened, a lot of the information available was ambiguous. Mm. So people were reporting on things. 
things uh, that, that were biased, and that I, I think that applies again to all networks. Um, but I don't think it was necessarily libel or slander because there wasn't enough evidence at the time. So well, in many cases, the evidence came exclusively from CNN and was proven to be false. You know, that's my issue. CNN and BuzzFeed, worst offender, but we don't need to get into BuzzFeed. No one really cares about them anyway. But they work together quite a bit. Collude, that's a very popular term these days. So when CNN is the source that is amplified then by Washington Post, and it's verifiably false, and they have to retract it, but the damage is done, that's happened so many times. And I can understand getting stories wrong, right? That happened. Everybody gets stories wrong. But how is it possible that every story they get wrong was pushing a narrative to undermine the legitimacy of a sitting president? I mean, wouldn't they occasionally get it wrong going the other way, right? Well, I mean, collusion is a pretty serious thing. Sure. And I know that these it's news just as serious when Hillary Clinton did it. And they never talked about it. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's just as serious no matter who's doing it. Right? Right. No matter what party is doing it. But they it. knew that Fusion GPS, the dossier, was paid for by DNC and Hillary Clinton. They knew that. And they tried it. They knew that Hillary Clinton went to opposition to try and do oppo research. They knew that, and they obfuscated that, right? It's serious if anyone does it. So why is it always in one direction when these fabricated stories, with their sources who are anonymous and exclusive to CNN, always line up to paint Donald Trump to be uh, an illegitimate president? That's my issue. Well, I don't think that they purposefully are presenting false statements. I think that when they reported on those things, they believed that those things were happening. And again, some of these things are still developing. So if someone reports something one day and then there's new evidence another day, that doesn't mean that that was a false narrative. It just means that there may, there most likely is bias involved, but they were working off an ambiguous situation. And everybody knows that, especially with higher office politics, there are back office things. But you don't think happen, there's a pattern so. with CNN of being far left and obfuscating? You don't? Because it's not just what they choose to make up, also what they choose not to cover, right? Like Brett Kavanaugh, where they had information that they knew verifiably some of the rape accusations, for example, Julie Swetnick, were false, that they could not be corroborated. As a matter of fact, they were refuted by other people's stories, and they decided to hold it until after the hearing. But go forward with the Ford information, the Ford testimony, which they also knew there were some inconsistencies there, which they withheld. So it's not just what they push forward that's false, but the information they withhold if they know it'll be politically damaging. You don't think that CNN does that? What would it take for you to believe that CNN is more left-leaning, I guess, is, is, is politically biased? I think that they do lean left, but I don't necessarily think that them leaning left and engaging in their professional activities, which is reporting the news, I don't think that that's wrong. And the reason why I don't think that's wrong is because whether or not you love left-leaning media or you hate left-leaning media, it's the freedom of speech. I support, of course, um, freedom of speech and freedom of the press. And I right. assume that you do too across the board, any speech, on campus, everywhere, right? Definitely. Um, yes. Which I appreciate because many people on the left don't. CNN doesn't support freedom of speech, certainly if you look at Turner. Well. Um, no, they don't. They've tried to shut down our channel multiple times, not only for false copyright, but for speech issues that they find offensive. So does NBC. So I appreciate that you support Hello. Um, I appreciate that you support freedom of speech, but you said you do think CNN leans left and that they're doing their job presenting the news. Well, let me ask you this. Fox News is pretty straightforward about the, everyone knows they're conservative. Yes. MSNBC is very straightforward that they're left. Would you say CNN is straightforward that they're left? Because you just admitted they are. Do you think they're forthcoming about their leftist bias? Or do they present themselves as mainstream down the line news? I mean, I think they're just as transparent as Fox News. Really? Yeah. You think CNN markets itself as a left-wing news source? Well, the, the reason why I think Fox News markets itself as a right-leaning Because they're the only network. one. But yeah, because they're such a minority. Right. So I think it's a marketing tactic. And I think that everybody knows that the media and CNN are left-leaning. Um, and so I, I don't think it's something that they feel the need to highlight because it's just so commonplace. When like Chris no. Cuomo goes out and says, no, no, I'm just I'm just getting to the facts. I'm a journalist where we know that's not the case. Or like a Don Lemon. As someone who's been the victim of some of these smear campaigns, um, I would just appreciate if they were forthcoming about their views. But how, how many false stories would it take? I mean, is Russia not enough for you right now, the fact that Donald Trump didn't include with the Russians? Is that not well, a big enough 
oh, we got that wrong. Like, because CNN was at the forefront pushing all those stories, which turned out to be false. Well, we're not sure whether or not... Sure we are. That. Well, we're not. Why don't you believe that? Because there isn't enough We have evidence. evidence. Yeah. No collusion with but Russia. There have been no charges. Things, He's not guilty. These things are very high intelligence. You know, if, if there was collusion, it's off record. No, it would be completely it's, on the record. That's why there was an investigation. I, I don't think it would. People who wanted to put Trump away, people like Mueller, there's no, there's no evidence of collusion. And the evidence of collusion that we thought existed was proven verifiably false because it came all the way from, circle back now, CNN. Well, so did, is that not a big enough deal? Like, claiming that our president is a foreign agent with multiple specific examples of stories that they subsequently had to retract that were verifiably false? I mean, what more than that would it take to say, okay, maybe CNN is, uh, has a bias that they're not forthcoming about? Well, don't you think if there was collusion that it would have been done off record? with the expectation that the FBI and higher level intelligence would be going through the logistics of I any think footprints. the FBI and these people, especially when you're talking about $50 million in taxpayer dollars and you're talking about hundreds of federal agents who've been investigating this, I think they have ways to get into what was off the record. You know, they assume it would be off the record. I don't think they think that Donald Trump is going to, hey, Putin, you want to rig the election for me? Thanks. You know, that's not what happens. They did a thorough investigation. Frankly, I'm amazed they found as little as they did, which was nothing. That's amazing to me. I mean, if, if you were audited or I were audited, you're putting the cuffs on us. You can audit a ham sandwich and send him to jail. Well, we don't have access to higher intelligence officials. And sure. Yeah, we don't. But they did say there was no collusion. So I'm just curious as to why you still believe that. Could it be because yes. of all the stories that have been drip, 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 drip from places like CNN that maybe it's gotten into your subconscious and you believe some of these things? Is no. it possible? No? I mean, it's possible. Anything is possible. Yeah. Um, but I, I personally, I mean, I'm a Democrat, mm -hmm. um, but I'm very pro free speech and I try to understand both sides of the aisle. Sure. Um, and sometimes I, you know, listen to Fox News just to understand the other side. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't know what happened with the collusion. I, I think it may have happened, um, but I don't believe that it didn't, only because of previous things that have happened. Like what? In the government. But like what? I, this is one of those things where you can say like, if someone accuses somebody of being a foreign agent, right? There needs to be some kind of proof. Why do you believe it? Well, I don't think that he's a foreign agent. Okay, why do you believe he's I working with Russia to rig the election? I think that those things would be off record. Okay, and you don't think the FBI would get, get to that? You don't think a special prosecutor, $50 million, would be able to find anything? And we were able to find that the stories we thought were true were false with CNN, right? So we were able to discover that, that he didn't know about the meeting with Trump Towers beforehand, that James Comey did tell him he wasn't being investigated, that they didn't get info from WikiLeaks. So we were able to verify that, all things that came from CNN which were false. I mean, that took a lot of digging, but you don't think that they would be able to find actual collusion if it existed. I mean, I don't know, because, it, again, I think that if anything happened, it would be off record. The same thing with the Christine Weezy Ford situation. I think that it may have happened, it may not have, but if Guarantee you it didn't happen. I don't, I don't think that's guaranteed. Uh, guarantee it didn't happen. Nothing that she said was uh, consistent. Again, that goes back to CNN. Uh, she gave a story to the shrink, which did not co uh, correspond with a story that was given to Washington Post. She gave information to the police that couldn't have possibly been possible. House, uh, named a house that wasn't there. No place with that kind of a floor plan. The dates didn't match up. Nothing matched up. Nothing was consistent. And I do think that, listen, rape is one of the worst crimes someone can commit, but it's really bad to falsely accuse someone of rape. True. Yeah. But she did say that it occurred many decades ago, so. and she has trauma. So, so her rec so her recollections. Do you think that's responsible for a news agency to run on a story with zero evidence or corroboration, even though there's there's more evidence than you could read in a lifetime? corroborating 
Brett Kavanaugh's story. He provided way more evidence than Ford did, right? So the FBI, when you talk about the authorities and they said, well, no, hold on a second, this is not consistent, right? You have plenty of arguments that would rebut it factually. Do you think it's responsible for a news agency to go out and carry a story, especially when the other rape accusations, like Julie Swetnick, I can't remember the other person, were verifiably false. They started running them, then they withheld them. You think that's responsible for a news agency to do? That sets a precedent that anyone can come out and accuse anyone of rape so long as it was long enough ago. No proof? That's dangerous. Do you have any brothers? Do you have a dad? What if someone came out and did that to your dad and seen and amplified it as though it were true with no proof at all? I, I do think that especially men nowadays are at a high risk of being falsely accused of assault and especially sexual assault. Right. And I think that that is terrifying. Um, but I think that people should have the freedom to say what they want to say. Well, this and is I an know example of someone having the freedom to say what they want to say. This but is an she example can say what she wants she to say, can, even if it's... She can, this is an example of CNN amplifying a story that was verifiably false afterward, with no evidence at all. That's well, we don't know if it was verifiably false. So guilty until proven innocent. No evidence needed, guilty until proven innocent. But being guilty legally is different than being guilty in the public domain. So just having your name, reputation ruined forever, as long as we disagree with you politically, that's okay to do, which is what CNN did there. I, you seem like a sharp enough girl. You understand that that's very dangerous. Someone coming forward saying, I was raped decades ago. I have no proof whatsoever. He has a journal. He has dates. He has pay stubs. He, there's plenty of evidence to the contrary. You do understand the danger in having a news network like CNN amplifying that to block a Supreme Court pick with zero evidence. You can't. I mean, that's dangerous. That's so dangerous. I think that, you know, I'm from Connecticut. Okay. And we had a case, I believe, a few years ago. It was, it's, it was in the recent past uh, where two, I believe, football players in college, um, they were accused of rape by another college student, um, and they were found guilty. And it came, she came out later and admitted that she made it up and only did so so that her ex-boyfriend or her boyfriend wouldn't be mad at her or leave her or something along those lines. Um, and the two guys are traumatized, obviously. Um, and the guys went to prison, they were probably raped themselves. They lost their scholarships, and of course that's damaging for them and completely unfair and illegal. Yeah. Um, I think that is illicit, that's terrible, but that's different than her solely claiming something. And both are terrible. Well, let's take it. Let's take that exact same story. Only but without of, evidence. Those boys didn't go to prison. It's not libel or slander. Those boys didn't go to prison. It must have been one of those uh, uh, educational tribunals then. Otherwise, they would have gone to prison for rape. But take that. Girl makes it up, right? Only switch out the tribunal or whatever that was for CNN, one of the biggest news networks in the world, and they amplified it. Doesn't matter if those boys ran and their lives were ruined. So you see the you see the danger and the irresponsibility. I, I do think it's dangerous, and I do think false accusations are terrible. And I think if you can prove that they're false, then you should be given the same punishment. As Why is it your job to person. prove that they're false? Because you're that, innocent until proven guilty. You're familiar with our legal system, right? Yes. Yeah. So you believe if because someone accuses someone else of rape or a crime, it's my job to prove that I didn't commit that crime. It's not your job to prove that I committed the crime. Well, if right I, now I say you you beat my puppy with okay. no good cause, okay. it's your job to prove that you didn't. Or is it my job to prove that you did? Because I have a much bigger platform than you do. I can edit this any way I want, and I can take it out to the world and say that you beat my dog for no reason. I have a lot of fans of my dog. You think it's your That'd job? That would be scary to prove? for me. It'd be really scary, wouldn't it? It would be. You think it's the, the, your job to prove that you didn't, or is it my job to prove that you did? I'm from a communist country, um, and... Can I guess? Let me guess. All right, can I, I'm pretty good at this. Okay. Uh, the ocean? Ocean? No? Not Vietnamese? Not Vietnamese? No. Cambodian? No. Thai? No. <laughs> Filipino? I'm Chinese Filipino, but I, I'm uh, from okay. a Chinese orphanage. Okay. And um, as you know, China is very communist. Yeah. Um, you've probably heard of the Hong Kong riots. Yes. Um, and so the freedom of speech and the freedom to live um, 
is very, very important to me. So how I view somebody falsely accusing somebody else um, without evidence, to me, as terrible as it is, I'd rather be, you know, falsely accused by you um, of beating your dog than having to be, you know, in a, in a Hong Kong riot. So that's just how I see it. But that's not the point. Is that's not what you have to endure. You have the same freedom here as anybody else, and you have the same uh, God-given inalienable right of being assumed innocent until proven guilty. It's not an either or, and that's what's wonderful about this country. And I would, ho I would hope that you continue to learn that and, and, and continue to experience that because I would hate for you to ever be falsely accused and have your life ruined. I would hate for you to be falsely accused of abuse and lose your children someday. You know, that also happens sometimes. I, 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 I'm um, very aware. So, yeah, and it sounds, to me like, it sounds to me like we agree on a lot. I think we probably agree on this. I bet you if we were to talk six months from now, we probably would agree on more than we even agree today. That's most people. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> All right. What was your name again? Right, Christine. Christy, but thank you very nice much, speak. Christy. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for being so kind. Make some magic! Oh, there you go. I think Christine and I agree on more than she thinks. Remember, if you want to support Change My Mind, join Mug Club at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. Uh, it's really the only way to guarantee that these episodes continue and you get access to hours of exclusive content every week not available on YouTube. That's louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. Now on to Lucy, who, even though she was a conservative, claimed to disagree with our premise, and so we thought a productive thought exercise was in order. Hi. Lucy, nice to meet you, Lucy. I don't work for CNN. Oh, you don't? No. You're just wearing your name tag for, I just uh, for, the, for a Decoratively? Oh, okay. Democrat? Republican? Republican. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then you're probably not going to disagree. I do disagree. Okay. I think it's really bad um, precedent to set that we think the major news publication that disagrees with our president. We label them as fake news. We don't listen to the other side. I think it's really detrimental to a country where you block freedom of the press from disagreeing with the president. I think if every outlet was like Fox News and really liked the president or just conservative criticism of the president, it would be bad for our democracy. I think it would be, it's better to have these disagreeing publications so that we hear this other side. I completely agree with everything you've just said. I don't disagree with any of it. <laughs> I, that's why I think calling them fake news is a bad thing. But they are fake news. How are they fake news? They fabricate news. They make it up. Like, they lie. Like what? Well, I don't know if you heard the examples. I just listened for a front. Sorry, guys. You've all heard this, but now I have to go back yeah, through I was, it. I was over there. Uh, all right. Well, we obviously have the, uh, the Fusion GPS steel dossier, which was paid for by Hillary Clinton and the DNC, which they didn't disclose. We have the fact that Donald Trump said that James Comey told him he wasn't being investigated. CNN called him a liar repeatedly. Turns out James Comey did say that three times. We have uh, the fake Russia story where they said that Donald Trump knew in advance about the Trump Tower meetings, and they said that their source was anonymous, and Lonnie Davis declined to comment. Turned out Lonnie Davis was their source, and they had to retract that. Anthony Scaramucci was an example with Russia. They said he was under investigation. That was wrong. They had to retract that. Uh, the idea that he received information on WikiLeaks before anyone else did. That was false. It turned out it was already public information. They had to retract that. Uh, CNN was the first one to push and cover the story of this idea that Donald Trump didn't condemn white supremacists and Nazis in Charlottesville, whereas he outright did. They had to fix that. So, I mean, these are issues that they've flat out fabricated. I agree. I think everyone should be able... I don't have a problem with any opinion. I don't, I don't necessarily think it's fabrication either. I think when a news source is like a big breaking news source, right. they come out with things that they aren't 100% sure about. They get tips on things they're not sure about. They publish what they kind of fits their narrative a little bit. I think Fox News would wait longer to publish something that maybe was detrimental to the president before publishing it right away, but go really quick and jump on things that supported the president. Well, no, but I'm talking about fabricating stories out of thin air. But a lot of those things that you said, it seemed like they didn't know. And then when they did find well, out or they got called you, on it, then they retracted okay. it. Okay, well, let me walk you through one of them, right? Because I just listed a bunch of examples, but here's one. So how do you go through, for example, saying Donald Trump knew about the Trump Tower meetings beforehand? right? Mm -hmm. And you're being fed this by Lanny Davis, mm -hmm. okay? And say it comes from an anonymous source and then put in your story that Lanny Davis declined to comment when he is your source. He is the person who was the source for the story. Mm -hmm. You are proactively citing an anonymous source that you know to be Lanny Davis who you said isn't commenting on the story. I, what? I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of that goes into like protecting witnesses to stories and stuff like that. So I think that's like a certain it was completely unsubstantiated, and they mentioned Lanny Davis in the story. Like, Lanny Davis, by the way, refused to comment. Well, who gave you the story? Anonymous? Wait, you mean Lanny? You mean Lanny Davis? They didn't cite that he was the person that gave them the information. No, they said it was anonymous, said, and then they said, by the way, Lanny Davis declined to comment. It was Lanny Davis was the, he was the source. I, d I understand protecting anonymity, though. 
I, well, not when it's always anonymous. Not when it's Donald Trump's pissing on Russian prostitutes. Anonymous. Not when it's, well, this Russia collusion, which we know, if you mm -hmm. work with a Republican, has proven to be one of the biggest hoaxes of all time. Ho constantly proven false, proven false, having to retract it, people having to resign in disgrace. And the problem here now is it, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have people out there, 40% of Americans, who believe that Donald Trump colluded with Russia when we know definitively that he didn't. I mean, that's an issue. I, and and, and I, I how do they not accidentally get stories wrong when on the, the other side? How is it always accidentally wrong well, in something that only they know about has with Fox no News source? Has never retracted anything? Have well, of they course never? They have. Of course they have. This is what breaking news outlets have to deal with. This is what they do. They release things too early and then they have to retract. And I think that there is maybe a bias in CNN that goes, or there definitely is a bias that goes to the left in CNN, sure. but that same thing is true on the right and the same problems happen on the right. I think you could just as easily stand out here with Fox News or Fox News is fake news I don't or something so. like that. I don't think so. I really I really don't think so. I don't have a problem with someone who's far left and uh, p promoting it as opinion. I don't have a problem with someone who's far right. So for example, I have the same problem with Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity that I have with Rachel Maddow and Chris Matthews and Lawrence O'Donnell, which is none. I have no problem with any of them. Mm -hmm. I, I have a problem with people who present themselves as though they are the arbiters of news or objectivity, mm -hmm. and that's what CNN has done for a very long time. That's my issue with them. I mean, Fox News' slogan until last year was fair and balanced? The radio side. And by the way, their news, though, their news is significantly more fair and balanced. There's a difference between the opinion side. So, for example, Fox News is really clear in separating the Bill O'Reilly's, the Sean Hannity's, the Tucker Carlson's of the world from, say, you know, Shep Smith, who's yeah. a center leftist gay guy, right? Or Judge Napolitano, who's a high, diehard libertarian. You know, they have Donna Brazil over there now. Whereas when you look at the host at CNN, Don Lemon, you look at uh, Anderson Cooper, you look at Chris Cuomo, for crying out loud, and they present it as though it's news, that's my issue. And it is, to me, always remarkable that the stories that, okay, we can say fabrication occurs on any news network, um, always seems to tar and feather and uh, be an attempt to undermine the legitimacy of our sitting president. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do have to acknowledge that when they get it wrong, they always get it wrong in a way that if it stuck, would be very harmful to the president. Yeah, th definitely. But yeah. I think that an important thing to notice about all those examples that you did, and those are good examples that you should be pointing out, that they retracted them, that they did their best to go against and say, oh, this was wrong. I think that undermines them being well, They didn't until they were caught. They didn't until they were caught. That's how most people function. Uh, most news. Well, I don't. Okay, fine, but I don't give them credit. I don't give anyone credit for once they're caught having to issue. A I think a retraction is plenty credit, but I also because Fox News, I'm sure, has had retractions that they've had to wait for people to call out. Sure. I think a lot. They got a lot of things about Benghazi a little bit off. They had to retract. Um, but a little bit off. But, but Brian Stelter, I, I his entire like show was Russia. Right? That, come on, you know this. CNN, I, I, yeah. their entire lineup was Russia, yeah. which was all false. But there was a all lot of things sources. that we didn't know about Russia, that it was good that there so was this agency up. looking into or just speculating. That's a good thing. <laughs> just If someone I mean, says, I'm speculating, fine. But if someone says, we're delivering the news, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Like Jesse Smollett, if they said, we're speculating, that's not what Brian Stelter and Brooke Baldwin went out and did. They talked sure about it being this horrendous hate crime, that this is a sign of rising hate crimes across the United States of America. After the Jesse Smollett hoax was revealed, Brian Stelter said, well, I guess we'll never know what happened that fateful evening. Like, my issue here is when you do have, uh, obviously we're using the term fake news because President mm -hmm. Trump uses it, but they fight back and say we're legitimate news. Mm -hmm. They're not. I think that they do do things I think they have a legitimate purpose in our democracy. That's why I don't think, I think they get a lot of things wrong and I think it's great that you are calling them out or that people on the right are calling them out. But I just think calling them fake news and I, 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 that's why I want to know what your end goal is of calling them fake news. Is it to get them not watch? Is it to get them shut no, down? No, no. Is I, it to get President Trump to do something towards them? No, and that's a very fair question. As a matter of fact, anyone here who watches my show, they know that I say bookmark Huffington Post, Salon, uh, Slate, CNN, that's all I read. I tell people always know what the opposition is, is, is telling you, you yeah. should be informed. Um, but I include CNN among that group. I include CNN among a left-wing activist group, not news. Especially, by the way, when they're trying to shut down other news channels. Especially, by the way, when they're trying to shut down YouTube, independent YouTube channels, and they have used the systems with false copyrights, and they, by the way, are the ones who coined the term fake news trying to talk about Republicans, right? Mm -hmm. I had been hit with the fake news moniker for something that was entirely accurate. This is actually a twist. A lot of people don't remember. Fake news was a term invented by the left. And then Donald Trump said, okay, well, you want to talk about fake news? And went down, the, just went through the laundry list of all the fake fabrications from CNN. So my problem is not with someone being left. My problem is not with, but being dishonest about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is a problem. And I just think it's hard to categorize CNN as this, as this whole. I mean, I've watched, you know, CNN Foreign Affairs for a long time or, you know, the shows that they do abroad. They cover topics 
in the Middle East and in Africa that a lot of places don't cover, that a lot of people don't have. So CNN American politics is such a small component of this large network that I think does a lot of good research and good reporting. It's not a small component though. It's the majority of their coverage. I think it's the majority of maybe what people focus here, but CNN is viewed worldwide. It's watched worldwide. It's It has people worldwide. So I'm... I mean, I know like at school we're sometimes made to watch CNN 10 every morning, yeah. but they do cover valuable news. Well, topics. they cover some valuable news, but the point is everyone everyone can bring some value to the table, but mm -hmm. you do have to look at a risk-reward ratio. And yeah, I'm not do. saying eliminate them, but I do think that it is important Thanks. to definitively, when you have an organization that is one of the top 10 donors to Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. when they're feeding questions to Hillary Clinton from the DNC, when they are There's actively a seeking- A person, Donna Brazil did that. Okay, well actually they've done it several times. They've actually were asking questions from the DNC script. Um, this isn't the first, and we can go back to journal lists. I don't know if you remember that, uh, Andrew Breitbart used to cover it when Andrew Breitbart was alive, not Breitbart the site, Breitbart the man. Mm -hmm. um, went back to Dave Weigel and all of his people I think as reclined. Um, it, it, it's an issue, it, it's an issue. I, I just, I, I appreciate that you want as many sources uh, of news as possible and open points of view. I totally agree with that. I wish that CNN felt the same way. I wish they weren't trying to silence voices of dissent, um, either through actual legal measures as they take it through uh, new media or through trying to tar and feather, feather everyone they disagree with as a racist or sexist or homophobe. Um, but I just would like them to be honest about the fact that they are political activists and, and, and not an objective news. I agree with that. I just think fake news is such a harsh label that has been used to quash freedom of the press for so long. But it was used against Donald, it was used against Republicans and Donald Trump and conservatives. Yeah, just because it was used against us doesn't make it okay. and doesn't mean when we call it out as wrong, we don't get to turn around and use it on other people. I think it's appropriate. I think, think it's, it's not I think it's appropriate when it's used against us when they No, sure I think they, they can do it. These. I think they can do it, but I think it's appropriate to use it against them. Because I think there was a long time in this country where people thought that Walter Cronkite was my god an actual journalist. Mm -hmm. And he said you can't be a journalist and not be a liberal. I mean, you look, at, you look at the long history of it, I think they've always been very far left and now people are just able to call them. You can them be on. an activist journalist, it doesn't, you don't, I mean, journalist doesn't imply that you're not to a side. Well, if someone says I that, mean, if, if Chris Cuomo were to come out and say, listen, my family basically runs this party in this, on the Eastern seaboard, I mean, right? And I am pushing an agenda, but instead he comes out and says, no, I'm just asking the questions, I'm news. Bill O'Reilly for a long time said, you know, no spin zone, this is a very, you know, I take things as they are, I address them, you know, from an unbiased perspective. I never liked he Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> I don't think anyone did. But, uh, but I always said Bill O'Reilly was disingenuous with that. I always said, listen, Bill O'Reilly can do what he wants. Did you call him fake news? Did you say all of Fox News is now Well, fake no, because Bill O'Reilly was opinion. Bill O'Reilly came from Inside Edition, right? It's very different to have journalists, to have anchors, people who proclaim themselves to be journalists. Half the people, I think, who were involved with the, uh, um, I can't, whether it was the Lanny Davis story or it might have been the WikiLeaks story, one of them was a Pulitzer winner. Turns out they completely fabricated this stuff. Yeah. My point is I mean, it's, it's an incestuous... I mean, my school gives out bullets. I mean, we know the, the super biased process that goes into that. Okay, so. well, you understand that. Yeah, no, I think that uh, it was jujitsu and turned on the left, and I think that it's appropriate, and they made their bed, they need to lie in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I would never seek to ban them okay. or silence their points of view. I tell everyone here, watch them as much as you can so mm -hmm. that you know exactly what you're getting. So what's this label fake news going to do for the conservatives? Why is them accepting this label or saying, you know what, we're fake news, we don't agree? Like, Well, that's a good question. Um, I think for the longest time, you know, for example, and this is not a trick question. You're probably not familiar with Journal List, right? Journal List was a big thing that happened. Uh, Andrew Breitbart covered. This happened uh, I don't think a while I was born. Back. Okay. Uh, well, I won't ask you your age. It's rude, right? To ask a woman your age. But you look very young. Okay. Uh, and it never really stuck. And the reason it never really stuck is because it was very wonky. Uh, it was one of those things you had to kind of do a deep dive to understand what was going on. But there is something that we've inherently known for a long time, which is a far leftist bias in the news. And then when these people have sought to undermine the president, and not just this president, they did it with George W. Bush, they did it with anyone who ran for president, by the way. Um, when they seek to undermine and they're somewhat successful, giving it a name so that people understand this isn't real, this is fake, this is not real reporting. For example, I think you have 48% of Americans who still believe the Russia hoax. Mm -hmm. You need to cut through that. And if you say, well, oh, they got this wrong, they got this wrong, they got this right, no. It's fake news, it's fabricated, it is, there's no it's, evidence. That's an wrong. odd stat to bring up, though, if 48%, because they've estimated that about 50% of Americans have actually read portions or all of the Mueller report. So even having that come out, I don't know how you could see CNN bias on that. People have read this report, see, and on its face value, they've... 
come away with that, no, or many of them have come away with it. Most people have not read the full report, not even close. People can say they've read some portions of the report, mm -hmm. and again, if you look at that polling, it's very subjective. They feel that reading the report, for example, has been watching what CNN has aired, or what they read on BuzzFeed. No, I very much doubt that people read a whole 400-page report, didn't say that in the polling question. Um, people feel that way because they believe a lot of issues. For example, they believe that Donald Trump uh, met with Putin. They believe that Michael Cohen went to, um, went to Prague which is, we know is not true. They believe that uh, WikiLeaks sent them, on, when you look at the individual issues, they believe fake stories that came from CNN. And by the way, all of this info stems from the Steele dossier from Fusion GPS paid for by the DNC and Hillary Clinton, and they don't know that. So people believe this, the Russia hoax, because of the messaging that CNN, and not just CNN, but everyone, ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, were pushing for a long time that were verifiably false. That's my issue, right? That's dangerous. I, I, I think, they have the right to do it if they're labeled opinion, and this is us combating bad information with better information. I, I think that's totally fair. I think, you know, but I just, I, I still fear that label. And I, I, I fear it used, I, it was used against Fox News, phone news for the longest time. Right. And that was dangerous too. And just because you don't agree with someone's political opinion, I just think fake news it's is It's not a, because I don't agree with their political opinion. Don't frame it that on. way. That's I not think fair. If there was, I'm not saying that because I disagree. If Breitbart had as many of these errors, I don't think you would sit outside Breitbart headquarters and say Breitbart is fake news. Uh, probably not, but I've said that Breitbart is not a legitimate news organization since Andrews died. That's good. I've said that too. <laughs> but my issue is not that I disagree with them politically. My issue is that they fabricate stories. But I'm just saying that the dichotomy between CNN and Breitbart, which you've both but admitted, Breitbart is an are opinion illegitimate. Website. I mean, it, well, it's not always marketed that way. They, yes, do have, they do have a news section. They have a news section, but Breitbart, you know exactly what you're getting. CNN still tries Don't to promote... Don't you know what you're getting with CNN? Well, no, that's the whole thing. For the longest time, until people realized they were fake news, up until this last election, they thought that CNN was my god journalism. Remember it was a shock when Candy Crowley uh, tried to uh, sideswipe Mitt Romney? Remember? Everyone was like, how, how could she do that? And I remember back thinking, well, because it's CNN. People didn't know. Now they know. Okay. So, no, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for talking to me. Thank you so much for sitting down. I appreciate yeah. it. What was your name again? Lucy. Lucy, Lucy, everybody. I'm a big Republican. I I no, I, I appreciate it. Hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this installment of Change My Mind, click on one of these other installments playing in a box. It's the only way you can find it because if you search it, it may not show up because it's controversial and, and YouTube wants to um, discourage that, the controversy, to change my mind, playing by the rules. We just don't know what they are. Subscribe and hit notifications.